Hi everyone, it's Lindsay and I am back today with a video tutorial on mirror stamping. Now there have been a few recent tutorials on this technique, however every time I attempted it I could not for the life of me lift my stamp straight up. I always smeared it. So I figured out a way that I could use my MISTI, do the same exact technique, but I didn't have to worry about my hand shaking or pulling that stamp straight up and smearing the ink. So I'm using this Farm Living stamp set from Craft and Desert Divas. I will be using the little pig image from the stamp set and I have a piece of white watercolor paper in my MISTI loaded up ready to go. Now this is a lot bigger than I need it to be. I will end up die cutting this, but I didn't want to have to worry about centering my images on a die cut. So I'll die cut after I stamp. I'm using a black dye ink that is waterproof and I'm stamping this first pig down onto the paper. Now I'm going to go ahead and lay down a piece of acetate. This is actually the front of the stamp set that covers the stamps and keeps them clean. And then I'll take this little pig image and I'm going to place it with the side you would put on your acrylic block against the paper. And I'll just line this up right where I want it to be on my little paper next to my other pig. Flip my paper over and hold that in place. Lay it down in my misty with the little edge in the bottom corner and then I can lay down my pig onto my plastic. I'll flip the lid over, pick up my pig. Now this gets really sticky here so I like to use my bone folder to hold it in place while I lift up my lid. But I'll open that lid up and then I'm going to ink up this stamp with that same black dye ink. Again this is waterproof because I will be using watercolor. And I'll stamp this right down onto the acetate. I'll use my bone folder to keep that in place. My magnets just aren't quite strong enough to hold this. But I'm going to give this a few stampings. And this is going to build up that ink on that plastic so it transfers quite a bit better to my watercolor paper. Now I did this beforehand too. I was testing out how I was going to do this and I will say that my first image worked better than this one that I'm doing in the video. So I'm just going to lay that paper, flip it over so the front is facing the plastic, line up that corner in the bottom of the misty, and I'll use my bone folder to really press that paper onto that plastic. Now I didn't do a very good job of pressing here. I still got my image and I can still trace over it just fine. However, when I really pressed it on that first time I went about doing this technique, I got a really good impression and I pressed extra hard. So just make sure you do that and also you can give that plastic a little bit of a huff of your breath to re-wet that ink and it will transfer better too. So I'm using a micron pen and I'm just going to trace over all of these stamped lines. Now I can see them here and I'm getting fairly close and some of my tracing isn't going to be perfect. Once you get these images colored in, you're not going to notice any of that but you do want to use a black pen that will correspond with your coloring medium. I'm water coloring so I'm using a micron pen. If you're using Copics you'll want to use a pen that is Copic friendly. So you just need to think about those things before you start your coloring. So I'll speed this up and just let you see how I went about filling in all these little lines. Just take your time and really trace over them and if you need to get down to eye level do it. Um, Sometimes I need to get a little bit closer just to see how my lines are actually lining up and that's okay. But I just went ahead and went over these very slowly and I'll fill in all of these little spaces where they should be black. And if you really want these to match like you want your inks to match, you can also trace over that image that you stamped on the right hand side that you first stamped just regularly. You can trace over that too and then your lines will match perfectly with the color of ink but I don't mind it to be a little off. So I'm filling in the eyes now and that was the trickiest part and I'm adding in the little eyelashes as well and then there you can see I've got the perfect mirror image. Now I didn't want to have to worry about centering images on a die cut before so now I'm just going to go ahead and line these up inside my little die here. This is the stitched rectangle die that is included in the fancy frames die set from Craft and Desert Divas. But I'm just lining those two pigs up in there and I'll use some painter's tape to go ahead and hold this in place and run it through my big shot. I also went ahead and placed my sentiment on the bottom there just as a placeholder just to make sure that I get my die exactly where I want it. So for the watercolor, I'm going to be using just a few of my distress markers here. And I've got this pink color out. 
I believe it is worn lipstick and I'm going to color in my pigs with this color. Now I am using a very light hand here and really fading this out almost into white. I really wanted to go for that really soft look on these pigs. I'm using quite a bit of water and just a little bit of that marker here and there to really fill these in and get them just a touch of color. Now for their little ears, I did bring in just a touch of pink raspberry, also for their little snouts as well, just for a little variation in the pink colors. Now underneath the pigs, I'm adding a little bit of crushed olive just for a little bit of ground, and around them I'll use some tumbled glass very lightly and really fade that out as well for a nice sky in the background. Again, I used quite a bit of water to really fade out both of those colors. I did dry in between with my heat tool just to speed up the process. Now to put this card together, I went ahead and used the next step up of the scalloped rectangle in that Fancy Frames die set, and I cut that for some with some craft card stock, and I am just placing that onto an A2 top folding card base, and then I will go ahead and put this watercolor image right on top of that craft with some double-sided adhesive as well. Now I did stamp that Missing You Pig Time sentiment right on the bottom with black dye ink, and I used my Misty for that as well so I could stamp it a couple times. I didn't put any dimension on this at all because I will be slipping this inside of a suitcase so the person can find it when they travel. So I didn't add any dimension. I kept this card nice and flat, but you could always add some if you wanted to. That finishes off the card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this technique and found it useful. I know I was happy to find a way that I could do the mirror stamping technique. As always, I will leave you guys with just a few pictures. For more information and the supply list for this card, you can head to my blog or the Craft and Desert Divas blog. I will leave both links in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching today and happy crafting!